Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the My Night Raw review. My Night Raw tonight was from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky, and the show just ended. And My Night Raw tonight, this show was absolutely boring. This show was terrible. I don't know what it is with My Night Raw these past few weeks. You know, the, the shows building towards Crown Jewel were mediocre. And then we came off of Crown Jewel last week with My Night Raw. That show was mediocre. And then we go into this week. And the show was boring and terrible. And this show tonight, this was like a catering jobber show where we had superstars from catering come out and compete in matches. You should call the show Monday Night Catering because that's what Raw was tonight. I mean, we are two weeks away from Survivor Series and this is your build to Survivor Series? I don't know what's going on, but this show felt like Bruce Pritchard booked this whole entire show instead of Triple H. This show didn't even have Triple H's fingerprints on it. This show felt like a Bruce Pritchard book show from beginning to end. Now look at the matches that we got tonight. When I said Monday Night Catering, look, I'm going to read you the matches that we got on the show tonight. Bobby Lashley versus Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali, he's a jobber, comes out there every week, loses matches. Mustafa Ali should be in catering if they're going to continue to make him lose matches. And it almost to the point where he comes out there and he looks like he doesn't even want to be there. I don't blame him. I do not blame him. So we had that match. Mia Yim, she had her first match since coming back last week to WWE. You know, she came back. She's uh, aligned with the OC with... Styles and Carl Anderson and Lou Gallows, you know, for them to uh, solve their Rhea Ripley problem. So Mia Yim, she had her first match tonight. And get a load of this. Mia Yim, in her first match back in WWE, was against Tamina. Yeah, Tamina. I completely forgot that Tamina was still employed. With the company. Did you all know that, T that Tamina was still employed? So there you go. Another one. Who's in catering. Chad Gable. Took on Matt Riddle. Dominic Mysterio. Versus Sean Benjamin. Again Sean Benjamin. Sadly a jobber. In catering. Another one from catering. Io Sky versus Dana Brooke, another one who's in catering and a jobber. Dolph Ziggler, another one catering and a jobber versus Austin Theory. Baron Corbin versus Akira Tozawa, another one who's in catering and is also a jobber. And in the main event, the United States Championship was on the line. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. That was my Night Raw tonight. And this is your build to Survivor Series in two weeks. Boy, it sounds like a good build for Survivor Series. My God, what, what a terrible show this was tonight. Well, anyways, let's jump right into the review. My Night Raw open up tonight with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, United States Champion, made his way out. Crowd was singing along to his uh, theme music. So we saw a video package on how Bobby Lashley attacked Seth Rollins last week on Raw. And then Austin Theory uh, cashed in 
his money in the bank uh, briefcase. So then we saw, you know, Lashley end up attacking Theory. Rollins pinned Austin Theory to retain the United States Championship, which that was stupid on them having Austin Theory go out there, cash in his money in the bank briefcase, and then lose to Rollins. But I could understand why they did that. Triple H decided to take the Money in the Bank briefcase off of Austin Theory because, you know, Vince uh, wanted Austin Theory to hold the Money in the Bank briefcase, which he did. And Vince McMahon slotted Austin Theory in the Money in the Bank ladder match because Vince loved Austin Theory. That's the only reason why Vince put him in the the Money in the Bank ladder match, and gave him the Money in the Bank briefcase. Now that Vince is gone, retired, and Triple H is in charge and head of creative now, I can see why Triple H ended up doing that. Yes, it is stupid, but Triple H did that to drain the garbage, the shitstorm, that his father-in-law did in giving Austin Theory the Money in the Bank briefcase. But Austin Theory, he is the future. He's the future of the company. But he needs to get to that level. He needs to be built up a little bit more. And then when he's fi when they're finally ready to have Austin Theory go out there and get a championship opportunity, and he's at the point where, okay, you know, I can see this guy being championship material. Then we'll start to see Austin Theory get that opportunity and hold a championship. But that's the reason why I think Triple H ended up taking uh, the briefcase, the Money in the Bank briefcase, off of Austin Theory. So Rollins got on the mic. He ended up welcoming the crowd to Monday Night Rollins. Rollins introduced himself, of course, always saying as a visionary and a revolutionary. He is Seth frickin' Rollins. He ended up saying by the hair of his chinny-chin-chin, chin, he is still the United States champion. Rollins ended up thanking Bobby Lashley. He ended up saying that last week was crazy. He put one little open challenge into the universe, and he's got contenders coming out of the woodwork. He ended up saying that he's got people like Finn Balor, Mustafa Ali, and the almighty Bobby Lashley. So, Rollins ended up saying that for the first time ever, Austin Theory tried to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase on his United States Championship. And Rollins ended up saying, well, that didn't turn out well for Theory. And we had the crowd chanting, that was stupid, which was good. Louisville, Kentucky acknowledged that that was stupid last week of Austin Theory cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase and losing. But we all know why that was done. So Rawls ended up saying that Theory will be out here later and they could tell him how stupid he is. So Rawls ended up saying something seems different about the United States Championship as of late. And that the difference is him. Rollins ended up saying that now he's the United States Champion. This is the top prize on Monday nights. Rollins ended up saying that he will add to his legacy when he goes one-on-one -on -one with a former friend in Finn Balor. So then the almighty Bobby Lashley ended up interrupting Rollins. Bobby Lashley came out. Lashley got on the mic. He ended up saying that he turned Selfie Boy, Austin Theory, into a punchline last week. He ended up saying that as for the BNCA Rollins, it'll continue until he gets his United States Championship back. So Rollins ended up calling Bobby Lashley Big Bob. He ended up saying that Lashley had his opportunity at the United States Championship last week. But instead, 
tried to take his soul. Lashley tried to take Rollins' soul. So, you know I'm saying that? Lashley's temper has been awful lately. And maybe that has something to do with him losing to Brock Lesnar. So Mustafa Ali end up coming out. Mustafa Ali end up coming out. A referee was trailing Mustafa Ali. Bobby Lashley got on the mic. He ended up asking what Mustafa Ali is doing. Lashley warned Mustafa Ali that the beatdown that he got last week will pale in comparison if Mustafa Ali came into the ring. Bobby Lashley ended up telling Mustafa Ali to leave before he hurts him. Mustafa Ali then charged into the ring. Lashley ended up elbowing Mustafa Ali in the face. And Lashley threw Mustafa Ali out of the ring. Lashley ended up saying that that can serve as a lesson for anyone that tries to get in his way. Mustafa Ali ended up running back into the ring. Jumped on Bobby Lashley's back. Well, Lashley ended up dumping Mustafa Ali out of the ring. Rollins walked off. Well, Lashley ended up saying that he doesn't know if Mustafa Ali is stupid or has a lot of guts. He ended up saying either way, he's getting him pissed off. Mustafa Ali is getting him pissed off, Bobby Lashley. So Lashley ended up telling Mustafa Ali they're going to fight next. So pretty much... That was basically that. That was basically how this segment ended. But overall, this was just very meh, in my opinion, this segment here. And now we had the match. This was the first match. Bobby Lashley versus Mustafa Ali. This match, to sum it up, was... Yeah. That is how I summed up this match. This match was absolutely boring. Match started off. Mustafa Ali ended up uh, delivering a drop kick to Bobby Lashley. He went to whip Lashley. Lashley ended up stopping, and Lashley ended up viciously whipping Mustafa Ali into the corner and out of the ring. Lashley ended up putting Mustafa Ali on his shoulders. Mustafa Ali slid off. And sent Bobby Lashley into the ring post. Bobby Lashley ended up dropping Mustafa Ali into the timekeeper's area. Ali then ended up jumping on Lashley's back. But Lashley ended up driving Ali headfirst into the ring post. Which Mustafa Ali knows how to sell bouncing off of the ring post. So Lashley ended up getting into the ring to break the ref's count. Lashley ended up going back to the outside. And he ended up throwing Mustafa Ali over the commentary table. So, we had Bobby Lashley in the ring. The ref was counting as Mustafa Ali was still on the outside. As the referee counted to nine, Mustafa Ali ended up getting back to the ring. So, Lashley ended up grabbing Mustafa Ali, ended up hitting a modified dominator to Mustafa Ali. Lashley ended up waiting for Mustafa Ali to get up. Mustafa Ali then elbowed Bobby Lashley, ended up diving at Lashley. Lashley countered into a one-armed spine buster to Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali ended up pulling himself up on the ropes, and Lashley ended up lifting uh, Mustafa Ali, ended up hitting him with a, another spine buster. So the crowd was chanting one more time to Bobby Lashley. So, Mustafa Ali ended up hitting a Diving Tornado DDT to Bobby Lashley. He then charged at Lashley. Lashley ended up delivering a spear out of nowhere to Mustafa Ali. And then Lashley ended up applying the Hurt Lock. The referee ended up calling for the bell. So, there you go. Bobby Lashley ended up winning the match. No surprise. Mustafa Ali, jobber, and... So just go back to catering. I mean, sad what they're doing with Mustafa Ali. This guy is talented, but WWE is just wasting him. To the point, every time that he comes out there, he looks like he doesn't want to be there. And I don't blame him. 
for this match, I said, very boring, a snooze of a match. And then we went to Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was backstage with the OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson, and also Mia Yim. Kathy Kelly ended up asking the OC if they fear retaliation from the Judgment Day after Mia Yim joined them to attack Rhea Ripley last week. Luke Gallows ended up telling Kathy Kelly that he's responsible for bringing Mia Yim in because he has a way with women. So AJ Styles ended up saying that the Judgment Day has been a thorn in his side since WrestleMania when he refused to join them. So Styles ended up saying that he wants to end it. So Styles ended up challenging Balor to a match at Survivor Series. Carl Anderson ended up saying that Styles will handle his business, just like Mia Yim will do tonight. So Mia Yim ended up telling them to keep the beers on ice when she gets back from her match. And they end up doing the uh, too sweet pose. And that was that. Now we had Mia Yim versus Tamina. And this is Mia Yim's first match back in WWE. And this is the best that you give Mia Yim in her first match back against Tamina. Like I said earlier, how many of you knew that Tamina was still employed with the company? Another match that was... Yeah. But the good thing about this match is we got a Keith Lee chant uh, to Mia Yim because, of course, Mia Yim is married to Keith Lee. But... Nothing happened in this match. This match, like I said, was boring. It was snooze. So we had Mia Yim end up winning the match. She ended up hitting the eat the feet on Tamina. So there you go. We had uh, also Rhea Ripley and Dominic out there watching the match. Damage, damage Control, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky were watching the match backstage. Post-match, Rhea Ripley smiled. She ended up approaching the ring. Rhea Ripley ended up going on the ring apron, trying to get into uh, the ring to face off against Mia Yim. Rhea Ripley ended up shaking her head, and she left the ring. She left the ring apron, and it got booze from the crowd. And Mia Yim was like, oh, come and get in the ring. So pretty much that was basically that. Overall, match was a snooze. And then we saw Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle was playing his bongos. I'm like, we're still with Matt Riddle and his bongos. He's like Ricky Ricardo playing the bongo. You know, Babalu. That that is Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is now Ricky Ricardo from I Love Lucy, Desi Arnaz. Late great Desi Arnaz. So Matt Riddle ended up finding Kathy Kelly. So Kathy Kelly ended up asking Matt Riddle where Elias is. And Matt Riddle ended up saying, oh, Elias is out booking them gigs. So then Chad Gable and Otis ended up walking up. Chad Gable ended up shushing him. And Riddle was... Tapping on his bongos. Awful. This this was fucking awful. Chad Gable ended up saying that the only thing more ridiculous than Riddle and Elias being in a band is them being a tag team. So Chad Gable ended up saying that he'll do what Otis did to Elias last week and put him down. So pretty much that was basically that. But Matt Riddle is now a comedy act. On My Night Raw. Banging his bongos around. He, he's Ricky Ricardo. Like I said. Matt Riddle is Ricky Ricardo. Late great Desi Arnaz. From I Love Lucy. 
And as Maya and I Raw came back from the commercial, Mia Yim was walking backstage, damage control, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky end up stopping Mia Yim. And damage control end up talking about Mia Yim being an outcast like them. So Mia Yim end up appreciating the offer. Damage control wanted uh, Mia Yim to join them. But the OC end up walking up with some beer. And so damage control end up walking off and pretty much that was basically that. And now we had Matt Riddle versus Chad Gable. This was a okay match here. Match ended up starting. We had Riddle end up circling Chad Gable. Gable end up grabbing a front face lock onto Matt Riddle. He ended up rolling Matt Riddle around the ring. Riddle fought up. He ended up going for a key lock, but Gable ended up backing Riddle into the corner. Gable then delivered a chop to Matt Riddle, and then he ended up pinning a back suplex to Matt Riddle. He ended up going for the cover, to which Riddle ended up kicking out. Riddle got back up, started kicking at Chad Gable, but Gable ended up hitting a dragon screw. Riddle tried to fight back, but Gable hit a second dragon screw to Matt Riddle. Riddle fought back, delivered some gut wrench suplexes to Chad Gable. Gable ended up getting his knees up as uh, Matt Riddle ended up in the Broton. Gable then ended up attacking Riddle, but Riddle fought back. Otis then got involved. Otis kicked over the ring steps and he had point at Riddle. And he had climbed up to the top rope. Riddle climbed up to the top rope. Chad Gable then turned Riddle inside out with a inverted superplex off the top, which looked awesome. Love that spot there with Chad Gable hitting that inverted superplex. And then as my Night Raw came back from the commercial, Chad Gable was still in control of the match. He ended up attacking Riddle's leg, which was hurt. Riddle ended up kicking Gable away, but Gable quickly ended up kicking Riddle in his leg. Gable then shushed the crowd. And Riddle ended up coming back and delivered a fisherman driver to Gable. Both Riddle and Gable were exchanging blows. And while they were doing that, you know, Riddle was saying bro, and then Gable was saying shush. So it was a bro shush while they were exchanging blows. So Riddle then unloaded on Chad Gable and he ended up crushing uh, Gable with the ripcord knee. Riddle then kipped up, ended up hitting a pair of running forearms to Gable. Riddle then followed up with an exploder suplex and he ended up hitting the Broton on Gable. So Gable ended up avoiding a kick from Matt Riddle, but Riddle came back, delivered a power bomb, and then delivered a knee to Gable's face. Riddle then ended up going for the cover, to which Gable ended up kicking out. Riddle then ended up setting up for the bro Derek, but Gable ended up sliding through. He ended up taking Riddle down, and he locked in the ankle lock on Riddle. Riddle ended up rolling through and applied the triangle choke on Gable. So Gable ended up fine out, ended up in a DDT, and he ended up going for the cover, to which Riddle ended up kicking out. So Gable ended up going to the top to deliver a moonsault. He ended up laying on his feet as Riddle ended up moving out of the way. Riddle ended up catching Gable with a hanging DDT, just like Randy Orton. Otis got on the ring apron, and Riddle ended up knocking Otis off, kicked Otis in the face. Gable ended up pulling Riddle into the ring and rolled him up, and Riddle ended up flipping through. Gable ended up catching Riddle with a backslide pin. And he ended up putting his feet on the ropes. And Otis ended up holding Gable's feet. He took the towel and put it on Gable's feet. And Gable ended up picking up the win. So there you go. Chad Gable ended up winning the match. But overall, the match was okay, in my opinion. And then we went to JBL and Baron Corbin. 
they were playing poker with a guy back there. Corbin ended up cleaning the guy out. And a waiter then came in with some bourbon. And JBL ended up saying that he doesn't want any terrible bourbon. So then we see Akira Tozawa end up sitting down. Akira Tozawa end up saying that he wants to play poker. So JBL end up asking Akira Tozawa if he's ever played poker before. And Tozawa end up saying to JBL that he hasn't. Akira Tozawa hasn't even played a game of poker. So JBL end up laughing. He ended up saying that his money is good here. Did not care for this. Did not. This is awful. And then we had Miz TV. The Miz explained as to why he paid Dex Loomis and why he regrets paying him. So the Miz ended up coming out there. He was wearing a cardigan jacket. He looked like Fred Rogers. He looked like, he looked like Mr. Rogers in that jacket. So he was... Mr. Rogers. So the Miz ended up welcoming everyone to Miz TV. Byron Saxton was in the ring with the Miz. But Miz ended up saying that he's the guest host tonight. And that Byron Saxton will be asking him the questions. So Byron Saxton start, started to talk about the video that we saw from last week. Miz ended up reminding Byron Saxon, that it was hidden camera footage taped without his knowledge. So the Miz ended up saying that he has a prepared statement. And there was a table in the middle of the ring. It was a photo of the Miz's family, you know, Maurice and his two daughters. So the Miz ended up putting on these eyeglasses for him to look more authentic. So the Miz ended up saying that he regrets paying Dexter Loomis. Byron Saxon then interjected the Miz, but Miz wanted to continue. So Miz ended up saying that he regrets paying Dexter Loomis, but all he wanted was empathy. Miz ended up saying that he has been here for 18 years and that he never called in for a day off. He ended up saying that he has never been injured for long. He ended up saying that even when he is injured, he still wound up in the ring. Miz ended up saying that he never received a cheer and that he tried to help Dexter Loomis on his feet. Miz ended up saying that he has received very little and Dexter Loomis kept taken and taken. So Miz ended up saying that he had to put a stop to Dexter Loomis's greed. Byron Saxon ended up asking the Miz why he told a different story to the private detective. To which Miz ended up saying that he had to put on a performance for what he thought was a Hollywood producer. So the Miz starts fake crying. He ended up saying that he's been depressed. <laughs> I've been depressed. Because Dexter Loomis is attacking me. He's attacking me. So Johnny Gargano then ended up coming out. Gargano came out, he ended up saying that Miz isn't depressed and that he was on vacation with his family in Cabo. So the Miz ended up asking if he had a private investigator follow him. Gargano ended up saying that Miz got caught in another lie and that it was posted on the internet of you know, Maurice and his family in Cabo. Gargano ended up saying that no one cares for Miz. Because he takes the easy way out. So Miz ended up asking why he do it the hard way. So Gargano ended up saying that Miz paid Dexter Loomis to help people care about him. So he ended up saying that Miz got caught up in the lie. Miz ended up saying that he wants Gargano to be honest. And why he is in on all this. So he ended up saying that Gargano is using his story, so people chant Johnny Wrestling. So we had a Johnny Wrestling chant pick up from the crowd there in Louisville. Gargano ended up calling the Miz Mike. He ended up saying that everyone knows 
that he is a compulsive liar. You know what I'm saying? That Miz always has been and always will be a compulsive liar. Gargano, I'm saying that Miz lies about everything, starting with that sweater he's wearing. To which Miz ended up shouting, oh, it's a cardigan. So Gargano ended up saying that Miz is lying to himself if he thinks he's pulling it off. Gargano ended up saying that Miz is trying to be Mr. Rogers. Get the reference there? <laughs> but Gargano ended up saying that Mr. Rogers was a good guy. Miz ended up shouting that he's a good guy and that he's sorry. So Miz was like, oh, now can we move on? So he can be the cornerstone of this company and be a role model for his kids. Gargano ended up saying that Miz can pay Dexter Loomis and move on. Gargano ended up saying that WWE officials found the footage from last week very compelling. And that it'll come to an end in two weeks when Miz faces Dexter Loomis. So Gargano ended up saying that if Dexter Loomis wins the match... Miz will pay him everything he owes Dexter Loomis. And also, Dexter Loomis will get a WWE contract. So Miz ended up saying that he accepts and that he will destroy Dexter Loomis. And that it will be awesome. So Gargano ended up saying that Miz can tell Dexter Loomis himself. So there was a cameraman behind uh, the Miz, and the cameraman was revealed to be Dexter Loomis. So then the Miz ended up running away. He ran out of the ring like a scalded dog, is what Jim Ross always said. So Dexter Loomis ended up snatching the Miz's cardigan. And pretty much that was basically that. But thank God. Is coming to an end in two weeks. This whole storyline has overstayed its welcome. It needs to end. And thank God we are getting an ending to the storyline. It was dragged out far too long. To the point where I don't even care about this storyline. I don't care anymore. I stopped caring about it. And then we saw Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was interviewing Sean Benjamin from earlier today. Dominic Mysterio and Damon Priest end up walking up. Dominic end up saying to Sean Benjamin that he is a failure. And that Sean Benjamin has been a failure since his deadbeat dad and Eddie Guerrero were on top. So Sean Benjamin end up telling Dominic to go away before he gives Dominic the beating his dad should have. Damian Priest ended up stepping in the way, and he talked down to Sheldon Benjamin. So we had Dominic end up pointing from behind Damian Priest. Sheldon Benjamin ended up accepting the challenge from Dominic. And so Dominic was like to Damian Priest, what, was that supposed to happen? <laughs> so pretty much that was that. Then we had Dominic versus Sean Benjamin. This was just a very meh match. So Dominic was accompanied by Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Match ended up starting. Both Dominic and Sean Benjamin circled the ring. Both guys ended up locking up. Sean Benjamin ended up backing Dominic into the corner. Dominic ended up quickly getting out of the ring. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley got on the apron to distract Sean Benjamin, to which Dominic ended up attacking Sean Benjamin from behind. And he started doing, you know, Eddie Guerrero with the... And then Sean Benjamin quickly fought back. He ended, up taking, uh, he ended up taking Dominic down. Sean Benjamin ended up sending Dominic into the ropes. And he lowered his head and he took a kick from Dominic. Sean Benjamin came back with a shoulder tackle. And he ended up getting Dominic to his feet. Dominic ended up quickly pulling himself out of the ring. Dominic got in the ring 
end up kicking Shelm Benjamin, and he attempted a suplex. Shelm Benjamin countered with a snap suplex to Dominic. Dominic ended up booting Shelm Benjamin back, and he started to beg, you know, Shelm Benjamin. Dominic was, you know, begging Shelm Benjamin, like, oh, no, 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 no. And then Dominic ended up kicking Shelm Benjamin, ended up delivering a jawbreaker. Mysterio started punching away at uh, Shelm Benjamin, and he posed like Eddie Guerrero. Shelm Benjamin fought back, and Dominic ended up in a run her Karana. Dominic ended up in a body scissors into the ropes. He ended up going for the 619 to Shelm Benjamin, but Shelm Benjamin countered into a tilt the world power slam to Dominic. So, at the end of the match, we had Shelm Benjamin end up applying an ankle lock to uh, Dominic. And Rhea Ripley got on the apron to distract the referee, which allowed Damian Priest to pull Dominic to the ropes to break up the ankle lock. Shelm Benjamin then yelled at Damian Priest, and Dominic ended up sending Shelm Benjamin into the ring post. And then Dom hit the DET. Dom ended up going up to the top rope. End up hitting the frog splash on Shelm Benjamin. End up going for the cover. And there you go. Dominic ended up winning the match. Man, you had Rhea Ripley getting on the ring apron, distracting the referee. And that allowed Damian Priest to pull Dom to the ropes to break up the ankle lock. That just shows how weak Dom is in the ring. That he needs to get help from Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest. That just shows it right there. That he is weak in the ring and he needs work. He needs to get better. But overall, very meh match this was. And then we saw Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was backstage with Austin Theory, to which Kathy Kelly refers to Theory as the former holder of the Money in the Bank contract, the Money in the Bank briefcase. Theory was furious about that. He kept saying that nobody understands him or the pressure he's under. And that they think he's made for this because of the way he looks. His athleticism and the so-called handed opportunities. Theory ended up saying that he was touted as the next big thing. And he exceeded that. He ended up saying that he outgrew that and became the face of a franchise. Theory ended up saying that they hate him because the whole world wants to see a person like him fail. And that won't happen. Theory ends up saying that when he thinks about last Monday, everyone thinks he failed and that they're wrong. Theory ends up saying that he feels more alive than ever. Theory ends up saying that he wants to talk about the Money Bank contract, the briefcase, and that it was an anchor on him. And no one has been able to touch Roman for two years. Theory ends up saying that the few times he's looked vulnerable, and the bloodline is there to protect him. So, Theory ended up saying that none of his cash and attempts went right. And that he had to think of something else. He ended up saying that he had Seth Rollins defeated, and that Bobby Lashley attacked him. So, Dolph Ziggler ended up walking up to Austin Theory. He ended up saying that he's heard so many excuses from him. Theory ended up telling uh, Dolph to meet him in the ring. And it'll show that he has no more excuses. To which Dolph ended up saying to Theory, sure thing, kid. And that was basically that. And then we went to a promo from Dana Brooke. And this was from earlier in the day. And Dana Brooke ended up talking about how devastated she was that Nikki Cross threw the 24-7 championship in the garbage last week. <laughs> She's devastated that Nikki Cross threw the 24-7 championship in the garbage. She's the only one that is devastated. All the fans are relieved that we don't have to see that garbage title ever again. That joke of a title. Ever since it was introduced in 2019, it had been fucking awful. It was so fucking comedic awful. It was more like our truths title than it was anybody else's. 
So thank God we don't have to see the 24-7 championship anymore. And then we had EO Sky versus Dana Brooke. EO Sky was accompanied by uh, Bailey and Dakota Kai and Nikki Cross. You know, Nikki Cross, you know, last week she was like, and then threw out the 24 7 championship. But this match, snooze, another snooze of a match. We had EO Sky win the match. I have no notes here because when Dana Brooke, when you see Dana Brooke in the match, you know automatically she is losing. EO Sky ended up winning the match. And then we saw Mia Yim. Mia Yim walked out to the stage post match and she kept saying that she thought about their offer. She thought about the offer from Damage Control. She kept saying that War Games is a time when you have to pick a side. And she picked hers. So then out came Bianca Belair, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss. So Mia Yim is joining Bianca Belair, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss for War Games. So there is one spot open for damage control for War Games. And then we went backstage and we saw Akira Tozawa. He was laughing with a stack of cash and chips in front of him. Because, of course, he's playing poker with JBL and Baron Corbin. And just by looking at this, you know, with JBL and Baron Corbin there playing poker, you know, this reminded me of the APA. This was them trying to recapture the APA. And they failed here, in my opinion. Nothing could replace, you know, JBL and Farouk when they were, you know, of course, the APA. But they failed here, trying to recapture the APA. So JBL and Baron Corbin end up looking disgruntled and disgusted. Corbin ends saying that he's going all in. And Akira Tozawa had three of a kind. Corbin had said that he has three aces, but he didn't show his cards. JBL ended up shouting that Corbin won, but Tozawa ended up stopping Corbin. He ended up shouting that Baron Corbin is a cheater. So Tozawa ended up challenging Corbin to a match. And so Tozawa ran off with the money. And that was basically that. Awful. This was awful. They tried to recapture the APA, and they failed. And then we had Austin Theory versus Dolph Ziggler. And this was very good. This was a very good match. Theory and, up, Theory and uh, Dolph uh, went at it, and Dolph ended up taking Theory down. Theory ended up getting to the ropes. Theory applied a side headlock on Dolph. Dolph ended up whipping Theory off. Theory then short tackled Ziggler down. Ziggler ended up going for a leapfrog, and Theory ended up catching him. Dolph ended up sliding off, and Theory ended up blocking the super kick, started stomping away on Dolph. So Theory ended up bouncing Dolph off the top turnbuckle. He ended up hitting the backbreaker to Dolph, you know, going for the cover, and Dolph ended up kicking out. Theory started choking Dolph on the ropes. Dolph fought back, but Theory ended up taking Dolph down for another two count. Theory ended up applying a chin lock, and Dolph ended up fighting up. Theory fought back, ended up sending uh, Dolph into the ring post, shoulder first. And as my night walk came back from the commercial, Dolph was in control of the match, and Dolph ended up hitting a DDT. On Theory, he ended up going for the cover. Theory had kicked out. So Theory ended up going for the eight town down. And Dolph countered into a sleeper hold. And Dolph ended up hitting a Famouser on Theory. 
and you end up going for the cover theory kicked out. So we had uh, theory end up going to hit the uh, eight town down for a third time, and Dolph end up sending theory into the ring post, and then Dolph hit the zigzag on theory, went for the cover, theory kicked out. So the crowd was chanting, "This is awesome." Dolph was sent up to deliver a super kick to Theory, but Theory ended up delivering a right hand to Dolph. Theory ended up hitting the A-Town down. He looked down at Dolph, but Theory didn't even go for the cover. Theory ended up hitting another A-Town down, a second one, and Theory was foaming at the mouth, started punching away at Dolph. Dolph rolled out of the ring to recover. Theory ended up sending Dolph into the ring steps. So Theory ended up flipping the stairs onto Dolph. And we had the ring steps end up hitting Dolph uh, hard in his arm. Theory ended up bouncing Dolph off the commentary table. And the referee called for the match. So the match ended up going to a no contest. So Theory ended up throwing Dolph into the timekeeper's area. He was throwing chairs at uh, Dolph. So we had officials and refs end up coming down to pull uh, Theory away from Dolph. Theory ended up backing away and he charged and pound and started punching at Dolph again. So as Theory ended up making his way to the back, he was shouting that he's not a kid anymore. So he ended up saying, he is Austin Theory. I'm not a kid. So he ended up walking to the back, and that was basically that. Well, it looks like this is a reset here for Austin Theory. So this is, this is good for Austin Theory, you know, what, what we saw here. So this is a reset. This is Triple H resetting Austin Theory after him losing the Money in the Bank briefcase last week and cash it in very stupidly. Overall, this was a good match, but the end was just, eh, went to a no contest. And then we had damage control and Nikki Cross backstage. Rhea Ripley ended up walking up to them. Rhea Ripley ended up saying that if Mia Yim is on Bianca Belair's side, then she's on theirs. So Rhea Ripley was like, let's go to war. So there you go. There's uh, the team for War Games. So far, you know, Dapsy Control, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley. And they will take on Bianca Belair, Mia Yim, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss, and also a mystery woman who's going to be on the team of Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, and Mia Yim. So we're only missing one member that could possibly be on their team for war games. And then we had Baron Corbin versus Secure Tozawa. This was an absolute waste of time. Baron Corbin won the match and the days on Akira Tozawa. Moving on. Kathy Kelly was backstage with Bianca Belair, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and Mia Yim. Kathy Kelly was asking them about their fifth member. Bianca Belair ended up saying that she won't reveal her secrets. So Chad Gable and Otis end up walking up to gloat about their victories. Seth Rollins ended up interrupting Otis and Chad Gable, and they were singing, and that was that. So here's who I see the fifth member being for Bianca Belair, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and me again. I have two choices. Could either be Becky Lynch or it could be Beth Phoenix. Out of them two, I see it possibly being Beth Phoenix. So I think Beth Phoenix is going to be the fifth member. A lot of people are like, oh, will it be Sasha Banks? No, it's not going to be Sasha. It's either going to be those, it's either going to be the two choices that I said. Becky Lynch or Beth Phoenix? I'm leaning more towards Beth Phoenix. Because Beth Phoenix was 
uh, the one that was put out by Rhea Ripley. So Beth Phoenix will possibly get her hands on Rhea Ripley if she is the fifth member. So it makes sense. So I'm leaning towards Beth Phoenix as her being the fifth member with Bianca Belair, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and Mia Yim. And then we saw Byron Saxton. Byron Saxton caught up with Finn Balor backstage. Balor ended up accepting AJ Styles' challenge. He ended up saying that he's going to win the United States Championship. So then we went to the main event. Balor versus Seth Rollins. United States Championship on the line. This was a very good match here. So Rollins ended up starting off the match. He was wrenching at Balor's arm. Balor ended up taking Rollins down. Balor got to his feet, and Balor ended up in a waist lock takeover, and he ended up applying, of course, a chin lock to slow down the match. So Rollins fought up. He tried to whip Balor off, but Balor ended up hanging on. Balor ended up in a headlock takeover, and Rollins ended up pulling him over for a one count. So Rollins later on got to his feet. He whipped Balor. Balor ended up avoiding two clotheslines from Rollins, but Rollins ended up delivering a back elbow to Balor. Rollins ended up throwing Balor out of the ring, ended up hitting a plancha on Balor. So then as My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Rollins was in control of the match. He was punching away at Balor in the corner. Rollins ended up hitting a run of forearm, and Balor ended up taking him down, started stomping him out of the ring. We had a point where Balor ended up driving Rollins' ribs into the corner of the commentary table. And Rollins screamed in pain loudly as he was holding his ribs. You know, brutal spot there. So Rollins got into the ring. Balor was stomping away on Rollins' midsection. Balor ended up sending Rollins into the ropes. Ended up kneeing Rollins in his injured ribs. So Balor ended up taking Rollins down. He ended up going for the cover. Rollins ended up kicking out. Balor started to focus once again on Rollins' ribs. And Balor ended up hitting a snapmare. He ended up kneeing Rollins in the back. And he went for another chin lock. Balor locked in another chin lock on Rollins. So Rollins fought out with a jawbreaker. Balor ended up quickly fighting back. Ended up applying an abdominal stretch on Rollins. So Balor ended up digging his elbow into Rollins' ribs. Rollins ended up fighting out. And he slowly punched Balor. So we have Rollins later on. He ended up going for a fog splash to Balor. But Balor ended up getting his knees up. So, but this was uh, the, the first time in six years that uh Rollins and Balor went at it, you know, when uh, at SummerSlam 2016, and Rollins ended up winning the Universal Championship because Balor got injured. So this was six years in the making, you know, that we finally see this rematch with Balor and uh, Rollins. So later on in the match, we had the Judgment Day. They ended up running down. Balor ended up taking Rollins down. Because Rollins ended up punching Dom, who was on the uh, ring apron. And then the OC and Mia Yim end up run down. They all began brawling on the outside. Carl Anderson ended up chasing Dominic into the ring. He clotheslined uh, Dom out of the ring. Balor then clotheslined Carl Anderson out of the ring. Damian Priest ended up Wiping Carl Anderson out with a show tackle to which Anderson went over the commentary table, which he sold that show that show the tackle from uh Damian Priest. So Balor ended up pinning Rollins with the drop kick and he ended up going to the top rope. The ref got distracted, so Styles ended up pushing Balor off the top rope. So then we had the OC and the judgment day, they brawled into the crowd. So Rollins ended up hitting the stomp on Balor. Rollins ended up going for the cover. 
And there you go. Seth Rollins, one match retaining the United States Championship. Post-match, Austin Theory end up attacking Rollins from behind. Theory hit the A-Town down on Rollins. So the crowd was booing the hell out of Theory. Theory then bounced Rollins off the commentary table. And he mocked Rollins, calling himself a visionary. Theory ended up sending Rollins into the barricade, started punching away at him. Theory lifted Rollins up, ended up hitting another A-Town down on Rollins. And the crowd ended up booing at Theory. Theory walked over, picked up the United States Championship. Theory ended up sizing Rollins up as Rollins got to his feet. Theory then ended up wiping out Rollins with the United States Championship to his face. And then Theory ended up holding up the United States Championship as the crowd ended up viciously booing away at him. And that was how My Night Raw went off the air. Overall, this was a very good match between uh, Balor and Rollins. And like I said, this is a whole uh, reset here for Austin Theory. I think Austin Theory is going to be going uh, and facing Rollins, challenging Rollins for the United States Championship. So, but overall, Monday Night Raw, what an absolutely terrible, boring show this was. This was a... Catering Jobber Show tonight. This was My Night Catering, MNC. So, you know, we had Miz, Miz TV coming out there. Miz being Mr. Rogers with the cardigan. You know, it's a beautiful day in Mizberhood. We say. And all this other stuff. You know, Dana Brooke taking on EO Sky. And then Tamina. Taking on Mia Yim. And Mia and Yim's first match back in WWE. And then Kira Tozawa and Baron Corbin. Catering Jobber Show. Monday Night Raw was tonight. But anyways, that's it for the Monday Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And I will see you all Wednesday night for AW Dynamite.